プランビックスプログラミングフェイス開始 Shut the fuck up! No one cares about your robot fan fiction. Know your fucking place, trash. Fucking robots. Don't give a fuck about no robots. They ain't got no soul. I hate mechs. Mech anime does nothing for me. Evangelion and Gurren Lagann are probably the only mech related shows I love, and I certainly don't love them because of the robots. I expected to come into this episode and not enjoy it as a result, but you know what? This was executed very well and I walked away fairly satisfied. This was an episode that was partly outsourced to Studio One Pack in the first half, with Toei's own team handling the second under Masahiro Shimanuki. When we got the staff list the other week, they listed Miho Tanaka as the supervisor from one pack, and like I said in that video, it may have just been a typo since the kanji are the same, and it turns out that was indeed the case. Chihiro Tanaka, the usual supervisor we get from the studio, returns once again. Usually in Super, the second half of an episode is far and away the stronger of the two, but one pack really pulled it out of the bag here, and I found myself far more impressed by this first half than anything else. The half opens with a great bit of character acting featuring Paparoni, and I say this on every rare occasion that we do get character acting in Super, it's nice to see and I really wish there was more of it. It does a lovely job of showcasing their personality and spicing up what is usually a pretty static dialogue scene. There's a transition that leads into this scene where we get a close-up of Moscow's face that seamlessly transitions into the orb on the end of Paparoni's staff. This is just one of many highlights from this week's storyboard. The artist behind it, Kiyosato Yamamoto, joined Super for episode 71 and so far their work has been extraordinary. From the Blade Runner-esque shots in 71 to the gorgeous and sprawling compositions in 86, Yamamoto is definitely one of Super's strongest assets in this department. He's also a bit of a mystery, his name shows up absolutely nowhere outside of his work on Super. That just doesn't happen, everyone has a beginning, usually somewhere lower down the totem pole, and most certainly doesn't start with a huge project like Super. Myself and a few others have theorised that this may be a pen name for someone with far more experience. That's not uncommon in the industry, you quite often find it when someone from another studio wants to sneak away and do work elsewhere. Again, it's a mystery, but I'm so happy to have them on board. Back to the animation then, and continuing with these little highlights, there are small instances of greatness scattered throughout. Vegeta dodging and punching away is short-lived, but surprisingly animated. That's a pretty nice little rotation, all things considered. 17 and 18's beam section is packed with awesome looking effects. Kenotsuka is on this episode and I honestly could have sworn this was his work. The effects look so much like what he did on 116. But Otsuka confirmed his work on Twitter and this wasn't it, we'll touch on it later, but massive props to whoever managed to pull this off, it looks wonderful. In isolation though, none of these scenes are spectacular enough to really write home about, but when put together one after the other, they help raise the quality of the episode by quite a large margin. This is very much how Dragon Ball Z operated. It rarely had genuinely standout moments, but its best episodes had decent scenes one after the other that helped make it feel bigger than it really was. This trend is elevated further by some wonderful supervision. The polish on the character art really can't go unnoticed. It's remarkably on model for the most part, and although Miyako Suji doesn't really care for the character sheets, her corrections are polished and pleasant enough on their own that it fits in nicely with everyone else. To wrap up this half, I can't ignore the highlight of this episode by a startling margin, Gohan dodging Punchia's attack. Like the others, it's incredibly short, but the finesse of the movement and the overall fluidity of the cut is seriously strong. I really wish I knew who was responsible for this. The timing of the movements feels a lot like Futoshi Higashide's work, but the smoke looks almost nothing like what we see from him, so I'm not convinced this is his. Though it's not totally unusual to have Toei staff in another studio's half, it's not usually the case. Studio One Pack has stacks of talent and have demonstrated some great work in the past, so I feel like a lot of these highlights are from young up-and-comers within their ranks. It's frustrating not knowing, but much like the mysterious storyboarder, it's just nice to know there's more talent floating around Super. I asked Chi Young Sir who did it, and he said that he would go and ask around the company, so maybe he'll get back to us, we'll see. Heading into the second half though, this is where Masahiro Shimanuki begins supervising. Shimanuki has been kind of weird throughout this tournament. His episodes have mostly been 
fine, but there have been more and more cases where his stubby proportions from Super's earlier arcs have reared their heads. That's not to say his episodes aren't filled with stacks of classic Z-esque shots, they absolutely are, but whether due to time constraints or some weird style regression, we're seeing a bit of a downgrade from him on the whole. His Jiren was a little questionable this time around. As far as his animation goes though, it doesn't seem to have changed much. His very segmented, shaking limbs are still here in full force, and that works pretty nicely with the max since they typically move quite stiffly anyway. His big forte is still with beam struggles, and they make an appearance at the end of the episode in full force, very literally. If there's one thing he's got going for him, it's awesome looking effects. He really does a great job of selling the struggle and eventual impact. He did so much work in this half that there are some instances of reused animation, but it's definitely not distracting like it was in episode 118. Futoshi Higashide seems to have animated the rotating fight scene. It's been heavily corrected by Shimanuki and as a result it is a little stiff, but you can see Higashide smoke in certain places so I think it's safe to say he was probably the one responsible. This isn't the first time we've seen a rotating cut totally transformed by Shimanuki. Perhaps the most notable cut in this half comes from Kenotsuka. He animated the big fusion sequence at the start of this half. Kenotsuka is of course a mecha legend, and although this is fairly rudimentary, it's nicely executed. He made me laugh on Twitter when he posted, even on Dragon Ball I'm still drawing robots. Aside from this sequence, he also drew what is basically another take on that bit of pepperoni character acting we saw in the first half, alongside the scenes of everyone looking shocked. But that is it for this episode, it's not exactly the most mind-blowing thing in the world, it feels like we're still in a bit of downtime before we reach the hotly anticipated Universe 7 vs Universe 11, but it was well done and a stark contrast to last week's episode which was just not great at all. Next week brings about the return of Yuji Hakamada, who I think we got a preview of in the NEP, his style doesn't seem to have changed much from Z and GT, so that should be a treat, especially if the other supervisor, Yuichi Kurosawa, manages to deliver the goods too. After that, we do have to suffer a break before Takahashi's episode rolls around, but that will mark the start of what will presumably be the arc moving into finale mode, and hopefully showing us some of Super's absolute best. I cannot wait. Before we go though, I do want to just apologise for this video coming out a day later than I probably would have liked, and of course for the lack of videos over the past week. I've kind of been in a bit of a funk, so trying to feel good enough to write videos, especially good ones, has just been a real challenge. I think I'm back on the ball again, so that's nice and good news and all that fun stuff. The next episode of my Super Supervisor series is in progress right now, so as I've said over the past couple of weeks, do expect that out by Christmas if all goes to plan. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Those videos take a lot of work to make, so I do hope it pays off. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching, as always be sure to rate the video, leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on this episode and the future of this arc, subscribe if you're new and I will see you next time.